Murray. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President, for your kind words. Yes, one of my family members uh, had a positive corona test, and that's why we now are all staying at home until um, things clear up. Uh, and I don't know how long that will take, but it's wonderful to have this opportunity to talk to you today uh, because I was really looking forward uh, to this. Um, uh, we've been uh, talking about this a lot, about the, our target for 2030. Uh, we have presented uh, our pl plans now. Uh, we want to reach a 35% reduction of greenhouse gas emissions uh, compared to 1990. Uh, as you know, we did this, uh, we came to this conclusion after an extremely thorough impact assessment. And also before you, I want to thank the Commission services who've made this impact assessment because I, I think it's an impressive uh, document. Um, and I hope you agree. Um, and I hope if, if you haven't taken a look at it yet, uh, please do, because I think it really is uh, uh, very helpful uh, to focus the mind on what we need to do. And it also shows how extremely difficult it's going to be, but it also shows that it can be done. Uh, this is a crucial moment uh, over the next years. Uh, if your parliament approves and the national parliaments approve, we will be spending an enormous amount uh, to rebuild our economies in response to this horrible pandemic. Uh, I know that this committee is on our side to stress at the same time that we need to continue our fight against climate change and steer our societies through uh, a very compelling industrial revolution. Um, we need to do this right. We need to make, be careful that we don't throw money away at the economy of the past. Our children will not forgive us. Um, so right now, emissions are not going down fast enough, and uh, we see the devastating effects of climate change almost every day. Um, the current climate and energy policy framework will not deliver on the reductions that are necessary to reach climate neutrality by 2050. Uh, in fact, we would only reach a reduction of about 60% if we continue like now. Uh, so this means we need to step up our ambition. Uh, Parliament has urged the Commission to include a 55 reduction target of greenhouse gas emissions in our uh, by 2030 in our Green Deal. And this is what we are proposing now. I know that this is too much for some uh, and uh, too little uh, for others. Uh, the impact assessment shows, in my view, that an EU reduction target of at least 50, at least 55 percent gives us the smoothest possible path to climate neutrality. It provides certainty for investors and a clear uh, time frame for sectors with a longer lead time for their transition. Uh, the impact assessment clearly shows a target of at least 55 percent is both feasible and beneficial for both economy and society. That is why we also immediately presented an amendment to the proposed European climate law. The new 2030 target of at least 55% needs to be included as part of our transition to climate neutrality. By June next year, um, I hope to be able to present to you the legislative proposals so that we actually deliver on this 55% uh, reduction. Just as the current 2030 target um, uh, of at least 40% um, the increased target is a union-wide target, and it's a domestic target, meaning we have to fight climate change through ambitious policies at home, because only then uh, we get where we need to be. We will revise and expand the EU ETS. We will adapt the effort-sharing regulation and the framework for land use emissions. We will reinforce our energy efficiency and renewable energy targets, and we will continue to strengthen CO2 standards for cars. Let me briefly go into some of these topics. In our transition to climate neutrality, carbon pricing will continue to play a key role. The ETS is a proven effective tool to bring down emissions, around 9% only last year compared um, uh, to 2018. It gives a strong price signal for green investment and spurs the market to develop cost-efficient uh, uh, solutions. It also raises revenues that can be used to address uh, social impacts or to finance innovation. We will also look at expanding the ETS to road transport and buildings. Emissions trading will be an extra incentive for change. In transport, emissions have been steadily increasing. And this I, I also uh, exchanged, uh, had an exchange view on this with uh, entrepreneurs active in the sector. Um, at the same time, we will need stronger CO2 uh, standards for transport. The guarantee that enough clean cars are available and affordable 
for everyone. Um, it doesn't, you know, the, the, the clean car shouldn't be a toy for rich people. It should be accessible to everyone. Shipping and aviation are two other big sources of CO2 emissions. We'll continue our work to bring down aviation emissions inside the EU um, and uh, to include shipping in the ETS. Um, and I saw that you, uh, Parliament also had an urgent call on this last week. Uh, we will also continue work uh, with our international partners to decisively tackle emissions from these global uh, uh, from these sectors globally. And I think there is a change of mood, although, we, of course, we have to wait for the November 3rd elections in the US, but there is a change of mood. And I think uh, Xi Jinping's announcement that China will uh, be carbon neutral by 2060 does lead to a number of steps in this direction. Uh, if they start, also, they will have to start working out the plans to get there. For sectors outside the ETS, the effort sharing regulation sets the necessary CO2 reductions to keep the right in incentives for reducing emissions in all sectors and to ensure a fair distribution, we will review it together with, in parallel and together with the ETS. Finally, uh, Lulu UCF uh, and forestry, land use, land change forestry, uh, they need to step up too. Uh, their CO2 is absorbed, but our, la our land sink has been shrinking and our forests are very often in a, in a very bad shape. To reach climate neutrality and preserve biodiversity, the, the sink has to grow back to previous levels. This is how we want to deliver our target in close cooperation with Parliament. It's an ambitious target, I know. Uh, we plan to achieve the same reduction in this decade as we have done over the past 25 years. Uh, but I'm confident we can do this. We have the policies, we have the commitment. I think we have the right people in place. We have the funds to support it. We all need to bring this together. So this is purely about politics and governance. Um, but fairness is going to be key. Not every member state, every sector, every household starts the transition from the same point or has the same capacity to address challenges of the transition. Our ambition should help not hurt the most vulnerable in society. This transition will be just or there will be just no transition. Um, I don't need to convince this parliament of this. I know that you are of the same view. And I don't need to convince you that everybody's looking at us, our citizens, but also the outside world. Every signatory to the Paris Agreement needs to update its national determined contribution. This year, our first target was an important benchmark. We can again set the bar for the rest of the world to follow. Let's make this a beautiful race to the top so we all win. Thank you.